hello guys you're welcome to this tutorial now this is a sketch we'll be making i had to show you how it is on the mannequin and it is easy to make it is not difficult at all if this is what interests you let's get started kindly watch to the end now i did a small sketching of how the sketch is going to be so that it will give me a guide as i am drafting along the first thing we'll be doing is to draft the front bodies and the skirts. The pattern paper is folded into two because we need it to be folded into two. After that, I'm getting the hip length, um, the knee length of 18 and a half inches. So I'm going to square up the line. Then I also have the full length of the skirt. So you have to ask your client, you know, where they want the skirt or the dress to get to. That is if you are converting into a dress. Then I put the waist measurement divided by four. Then I added sewing allowance of one and a half inch. Then I also indicate the nipple to nipple measurement as our that is 4.5 that I use. Then on the hip line, I put the hip measurement divided by 4 plus the sewing allowance. Now, because it's a pencil skirt, we won't be needing this hip line. Now, from the hip measurement, whatever you have there, since the hip is 43 divided by 4 is 10.75, I minus 2 inches from it. So, what I use for the full length is 8.75. Then I also add the sewing allowance, so I'm going to be connecting it now. Now from the hip, you are going to take it all the way to the hemline. So I went ahead to just blend that sharp angle. Now the shape is looking funny. It was because I did not add sewing allowance to the waist measurement, so I had to increase it. I hope you understand. So I went ahead to connect it back. Now this is how a proper <laughs> shape should look like. So after that, I cut off the paper. Now you can see that when I cut off, I did not cut on the hemline. I left some allowances down there because we will need it. Then the next thing is you place it on a fresh paper to cut the back. So just extend the hip measurement into the back. So on the waistline, I added one inch for zip allowance. On the hip, I made it one and a half. So that you can have that, you know. A butt wherever so you can accommodate your butt very well on the needle I added one inch then the hemline one inch so I connected the lines all the way to the full length now this is for those that are turning it into a dress I minus 0 0.75 from the waist that is just to tighten your back so you don't have any zip bulge. Then you connect it to the way, to the hip. But if you are not doing that, just cut from your one inch zip allowance. So you have your one inch on your waist. But because I'm making a dress with this, that was what I did. For your upper bodies, do that also along the zip side. And I went ahead to roll the hemline. Just the way you see me doing like that. After that, I'm going to place the front on its back so we can cut the front now. So we can cut the front and the back. Then I also cut the excess allowance on the back. Now this is me putting my zip allowance now. So we have our one inch. Now for those that are making a dress with this, you'll be wondering the 0.75 I take from the 
waste if it do not affect the measurement no go ahead and put in your 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 allowance just the way you indicate it it will be perfect to make your back to to be flat like you don't have any bulge it doesn't matter it doesn't affect your measurement now i went ahead to open the the skirts and i use my marker to indicate all the points then for the darts i also put the dart on the other side because we'll be working with that darts i hope you understand now since we have the dart of four and a half inch on the hip line i indicate the four and a half inch then i connect it just the way you see me doing like that then i had to come down by one inch and i also mark so now we are using 10 inches no longer nine then from there i square it up after that you are going to take your curl ruler so from that point you are going to connect all the way to the down part now to get the button placket i mark one and a half inches one and a half inches all the way to that 10 inches then i also roll the line so after that we are going to be because if you will check the picture of the thumbnail it has a curvy part now from the nine inches you're going to curve it that way into the 10 inches yeah so that becomes the button placket so for this down part i'm going to mark four inches from this actual measurements because it's before the hemming allowance so i did four inches yeah so i also indicated four inches there so that i can have a straight line now guys before you cut before you do anything you have to cut this on your fabric first because that is the front part you cut it on your fabric first then you can now take your pattern paper you open it up and cut out your shape i hope you understand then i went ahead to remove the button placket Now the button plackets, it depends on how many buttons you want to put. You can choose to put four or five. So I'm just trying to indicate how many buttons I want to put. Then for the splash and spread, yeah, I mark from the button, from the down of the button I came up, then from the other side, I also came down, that's from the second button. Now this is me cutting the excess paper away from the full length. Then I connected the first line into, you know, just watch what I do. That is how I connected it. Now this down part here. So that one inch is for the hemming allowance. Now I'm going to slant it. Now if you want to slant yours, slant from the along the timing alarm and slant from the main measurement not on the one inch i corrected it later so you can see where i'm cutting it to you have to slant up to the first line then from there i slash those two points then i put a fresh paper underneath Then I mark one inch, that is just the space I want for our pleats, that's the slash and spread. So I use my marking tape to secure it down. 
you can do one and a half you can do two inches it will depend on how full you want your pleats to be so i also mark one inch on the other side then i pin it down sorry i got me down yeah so this is me just using the maxing tape to just gum everything down then i cut out some of the paper then the other side also now if you want to cut your fabric or your pattern paper you pleat from one slash to the other one you fold it that way and you leave it you take the other one from down part you pleat and you leave it that way because the way the skirt is the pleating is facing up but if it is facing down you start from the upper part and you pleat down so when you open it up you already have that you know pleat line so you notch that point you're going to notch it so if you are sewing on your fabric you notch and that is how it's going to be now if you are cutting you're going to follow that shape follow the shape it is giving you can you see what i mean now i've already cut on the fabric and i added half half inch sewing allowance because i cut this particular part into two now this is the placket i added half inch all around now the placket doesn't have to have half inch on the waistline so i gum it with paper gum then we are going to be pleating the skirts the front part now so you take you can see the way it's facing up because that is how we want it to be you are going to pleat to the into the seam allowance and you would iron it now when you get to the seam allowance it doesn't have to get all the way there because that place does not have any any slash so this is the front i cut two like i said now if you don't want to pleat if you don't want the facing and the main fabric to have the splash and spread you can cut one first then the second one you cut that is the upper one we have the slash and spread so i went ahead to sew the aiming the half half inch on the side and i also trimmed the down parts so after pleating and sewing it this is how it is so you are going to turn it to the other side so after turning you're going to give it a good press now you can choose to top stitch or you use your hands needle to stitch it before ironing then you go ahead and run a stitch on it just to secure it down now for the button placket you are going to place it one after the other and you sew half inch like that so you can turn it after doing that this is how it is now you are going to place it on your skirt part and you sew it with the half inch after sewing guys this is how it is our skirt is almost getting ready then you take your the front one and you are going to hem the down part first with the one inch sewing allowance then you place the other one on it and you are going to just run a stitch there just to hold it down that becomes our full front now this is the back I've sewed the zip allowance and I've ironed it so you also aim the down part now you have to open it because it's going to have a pleat before you hem the down part then after sewing it and aiming the down part this is how it is i also run a stitch on the upper part then we have our placket i also run a stitch on that placket just to secure it to the main 
bodies of these kids. Then you take your back. And you are going to be sewing the side seam. You sew it with your seam allowance. And you sew the other side also with the seam allowance. I hope this tutorial has been helpful guys. Kindly give me a like. Subscribe to my channel. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.